face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week, we're going to cover actually the two bulkiest grass types in Chestnut versus Tangrowth. Now, both these Pokemon are actually being pretty much infamous for being just that. The tank is grass types around, while the grass typing itself isn't necessarily the best, bulkiest variants when it comes to defensive aspects. There are things to be considered here. One thing is that they are the soakers of ground based damage, which means that, you know, Pokemon will levitate while holding a candle, of course, lion types. These two really just push it over the edge because they soak damage really well and can stay in against actually a plethora amount of matchups. So, with that said, we're going to actually go over the overarching theme, move pool, and whatnot to find out which one of these two really are better. Now, before going into this episode, I just really want to state this, that um, Tangrove has been for the longest time infamous for doing really well in the highest tier in both Generation 6 and 7. I don't believe this aspect that has made its defining is on par with what we're going to debate here, since they only are leaning on the assault vest variant, and there are much more to these Pokemon, and while the Assault Vest variant on Tangrowth is superior, I wouldn't say that that automatically make it better on Chestnut, because Chestnut has a lot of things to offer, and since we are debating a League aspect in these videos, we're not going to take the Tangrowth win for him. Well, for the hell with it, because Chestnut, like I said, has a lot to offer. So with that said, we're going to go over the Pokemon introduced first, and that's going to be Tangrowth. Now, Tangrowth is a very interesting Pokemon melee because when it was introduced in Generation 4, it wasn't considered necessarily all that good. Uh, mainly because Regenerator was not a thing, and quite frankly, it just became, in quite honestly, a worse shaman in all regard. It really took a Generation 4 to really define itself. So, first and foremost, Soul Grass type. It's a fairly good defensive typing for common moves yet they have a lot of of course weaknesses so electric grass ground and water is going to resist that takes you quite a lot and quite far however bug fire flying ice and poison are the things you're weak for and that makes the defensive typing while good in some aspects also forcing you to watch out for certain matchups that said tangrove of course due to its bulk as you guys can see on the screen it does kind of deviate itself for actually being so hits. First and foremost, is HP at 100, attack at 100, 125 in its defense, so fairly high there. Special attack also quite high, so it could be definitely be used as a mixed attack with 100 and 110 in, in its attack representatively. However, its speed tier and special defense is where it plummets. Special defense is 50, means that most special hits will hurt you quite a lot. And of course, the speed here really aren't ensuring that anything you do, you will of course be hit first before retaliating. Very few matchups that are slower than Tangrove. So, with that in mind, Tangrove is most usually used to be, of course, a slower Pokemon to be able to be tagging hits and retaliate. Now, that said, as I said before, when it comes to its abilities, we have Leaf Gone, which are pretty much useless for Tangrove. Chlorophyll, which was an aspect to the Pokemon itself, as it gets growth. Uh, to double its speed, so while 50 speed tier is bad, double that is kind of fair. Though there are Scarfers that will outspeed you, however, being able to just hit harder is always some nice aspects. And of course, Regenerate, which of course give you a roughly 33% of your health back when you're switching out. For a Pokemon that is bulky, is a very, very strong and good ability to have, and Tangrowth represents probably the best variant of that aspect. When it comes to the Moopal Tangrove, it's actually it's quite a mixed bag. It's a good mixed attacker with good mixed attacks in bond with it. So Tangrove becomes quite a formidable foe to actually force to be dealing with. First and foremost, we got something like blocked lock in opponents, which is always going to be great. We have utilities and the likes of Sleep Powder, which while it's 75 percent chance of hitting it's a bit shaky it still is an aspect is very good towards it uh we also have a knockoff and actually natural gift we have gidrain ancient power ring out which actually is superior good and normal c moves get with power whip uh, when it comes to the team we have a few niches here the one that stands out the most is earthquake of course very few grass types get that and it's a good filler because it does mean that you can deal really well with the opposing fire types and that was going to be a good thing. We also have Brick Break, Sludge Bomb, Rock Tomb, Air Lace, uh, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, we have Sword Stance for setting up, we have Psych Cap to be able to potentially recover outside of Synthesis, Rock Slide, Infestation, Poison Jab, Grass Knot. And then when it comes to the Egg moves, we got a few moves that are interesting. First and foremost, our Leech Seed, which is really nice. 
Uh, definitely make you able to stall potential matchup nature power, which is always helpful. Definitely in terrain fisted areas that are now with, of course, the Cocos or the Tapus. Cocos in mind with no the Tapus in mind. So be able to have nature power to actually uh, obliviate and, of course, abuse that is always going to be a good thing. And for actually Ultrasound and Moon, they also got a wake up slab, which is great with sleep powder, while a bit on the shaky side when it comes to setting up. It still is an aspect that makes it really interesting. Uh, when it comes to Ultra Monsoon's Mutators, like I said before, we have Synthesis, which is one of the better moves there. But we also have uh, Endeavor and Seed Bomb. And when it comes to previous generation move, we really don't have anything that stands out outside of actually Bullet Seed. Outside of that, that is pretty much what all Tangroves get. However, as I stated here, the filler moves in Tangrove really is what are defining it. Uh, to go with mixed or actually even into lead seed style and go for a knockoff, a physical set with power weapon earthquake. There are a lot of situations where Tangrove just works and it really aren't definitely hurt so much by the matchup itself. And I'm, I myself had a very tough time versus Tangrove in a previous league that I had where I used Heracross to be able to force that Pokemon out. Unfortunately for me, it carried Airlays and you know, I missed my Mega Horn and I got KO'd by the Airlays. So those are aspects to really just define it. Tangro as a league Pokemon is probably one of the strongest grass types to be able to be drafting because it really does have a full move pool of relevant moves. While it isn't the broadest move pool, is as I say that it's a relevant move pool for a lot of matchups, which are why Tangro is one of the greatest grass types in the whole game. It is whether or not it is greater than Chestnut. So with that said, let's check him out. Now, Chestnut is an interesting Pokemon because I don't believe it really got defined for how good it really was when it was introduced. Quilladin really ruined this Pokemon when it comes to design wise, and of course, Greninja was infinitely just better in all aspects. So, Chestnut was kind of forgotten to get with Dale Fox, unfortunately. That said, there is a layer to Chestnut. It's if you're going to compare it to the other grass fighting type, this is the bulkier variant. And quite frankly, both Brillum and Verision are just very, very offensively active. And while the defensive typing itself really does allow it to be just that defensive, Chestnut is the only one defining that, then it does a really good job at it. First and foremost, grass fighting, as I said, it's a decent defensive typing. While there are aspects to watch out for, it is very much like a bug fighting type, in, as stated. It's a good defensive typing in all its rights. So that said, we got resistance in dark, electric, grass, ground, rock, and water, um, which is great. Definitely not being stealth rock weak are always going to be a helpful advantage. However, there are a few weaknesses that survive here from the grass type. That's going to be the fire, ice, and poison. Of course, new weaknesses in fairy and uh, psychic. And of course, the one that are quadruple here are a flying resist, so or flying weakness. So that means that there are a few matchups here where Chestnut is definitely forced to switch out. However, it is defensive enough to stay in against a lot of environments. So if you look at the stats here, it is definitely bulkier than Tangro. While having less HP at 88, it still is a very fair uh, HP stat. 107 in attack means it's stronger. 122 in defense means it's more defensive. 74 in its special attack is bad it definitely makes harder for it to be used like that however it is an aspect towards it 75 special defense is definitely able to be a special defensive monster to get with 64 speed here which is still low in the cause of speed aspect but at the same time it's speeder than tangrove and quite frankly for being a defensive pokemon it's quite speedy one would define that the defensive pokemon besides Cresselia, that is that around the 60s is where you want to go at uh, I think Malodic and Cresselia is the only Pokemon that kind of deviate from that to being in the 80 speeds here. And it's a quite rare sight. I do believe Yuxim Mesprit kind of handle there or gets there too. But for a grass type that's defensive, Chestnut is actually quite speedy. And also comes as abilities, Overgrow and Bulletproof is what we have. Overgrow is probably the one you don't want to have in middle because of really just forcing you to be in the lower speed aspect. And that's... Well, besides the Billy Drum Salak set, there really aren't any reason to go for an overgrowth set. However, Bulletproof will alleviate you of the likes of Sludge Bomb, for example, which is good to have a complete immunity to one of the most common spam moves against grass types. It also alleviates yourself of the likes of Shadow Ball. So, Gengar has potentially a rough time versus a Chestnut, and that's always good to know that there are aspects of Chestnut where it just can stay in and survive because its ability to get with the defensive type and really just make it tougher for a lot of matchups to be able to deal with Chestnut effectively. And which of course makes it one of the more interesting defensive Pokemon in the whole game. But as you guys know, I've 
Pokemon is only as good as your move pool allows it to be. So how good is Chestnut's move pool? And as I stated before, Grass types needs a layer to define themselves, and that becomes pretty much obvious when we're talking about the move pool, because here's where a Grass type either just really raises or just falls apart. Chestnut is of course the one that keeps on raising. The things that really we just want to talk throughout about are Spiky Chill, which is an aspect to make sure that it works much like a Protect really, but if you make a move that are physically orientated towards your contact move, you will get hit much like a Rocky Helmet damage. And that's very, very nasty. And as I said before, bullet, uh, bullet, <laughs> bullet drum, Billy drum is here to get it with the lies of actually roll up. Want to capitalize on that? Lead seed also here on chestnut and with spike and shield. That's a very ferocious combo and probably one of the more dangerous one. We also have the strongest, of course, physical grass move you can get in wood hammer. Uh, definitely more preferable over power wave mail because you actually are able to connect their hit. Power whip has a bit of a shaky hydro pump accuracy of 85, and while good, it is still not as good as Woodhammer. And of course, with the HP mod, you get recoil damage. I don't believe it's that bad. I think it's a great aspect towards it. When it comes to TMU, we have a few varieties. We have Dragon Claw, for example, bulk up Earthquake, of course, here too, with the Smackdown, Brick Break, we also have Sludge Pump, Rock Tomb, Air Lakes, much like Tangrove, together with Low Sweep, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, Shadow Claw, Payback, Stone Edge, Jar Ball, Sword Stance, Bulldoze, Rock Slide, Poison Jab, Grass Knot, and of course, Nature Power. So we can also use the possible terrain aspect while probably not as effective. It's definitely a clear difference between 1 and 10 in special attack and of course 75. When it comes to the egg moves, here is where Chestnut stands out a little bit, mainly because we get synthesis here, which is always going to be good, but the thing that stands out the most are spikes. Being a defensive Pokemon, they'll be able to stand up against a lot of matchup means that spikes are something to actually damage in your opponent on a switch out. Because usually you want to switch out to be able to fend off this Pokemon more properly, since of course it walls a lot of Pokemon effectively just as it is. So spikes being able to kind of hinder that really just puts a layer on Chestnut. Other than that, we actually have Curse and Defense Curl. Defense Curl is good, uh, not because it boosts your defense by one, I don't believe anyone care about that, but it does kind of boost your rollout. Rollout becomes double the power as a one defense curl as go, and that's why the um, milk tank from, um, oh, I can't believe the trainer. Um, in Generation 2, however, dear lord, I can't remember the name. The, the Poke Aims mascot, basically, the rollout does double the damage after the defense curl. That's why that rollout was so incredibly effective. However, when it comes to TM move, here is where Chestnut stands out a little bit more because it puts a really high layer of a defensive aspect. First and foremost, we have Super Fang, which is always going to be helpful move to get relies up Iron Head, Seed Bomb, uh, Thunder Punch, Low Kick, Block to be able to, of course, force Pokemon in, much like Tangrove, Iron Effect, Super Power, Sun Headbutt, Iron Tail, uh, Pain Split, Giga Drain, Drain Punch, Focus Punch, Whirl Seed, Helping Hand, and Ever and Stomp and Tantrum. And of course, Drain Punch is the one that really stands out because it puts another way of recovery towards your Pokemon. And if you want to carry it being a physical active, Wood Hammer Drain Punch would probably be more preferable than the likes of a C Focus Punch. And of course, low, low Kick is always a good aspect. Uh, when it comes to previous generation, Mood really aren't anything to talk about. I guess one that really stands out is uh, Hone Claw. But at the end of the day, I think it's a worthless move. And quite frankly, if you're going to use a chestnut, you use it for the defensive aspects. Um, the thing that stands out the most with Tangrowth, or I mean with chestnut, is that being able to set up spikes, you can spike and shield, and of course, lead seed really just force switches after switches. And of course, even with Roar in mind, this is something that chestnut does really effectively. There are very few matchups that really forces out chestnut, but the things that force it out, yeah, you probably need to switch out. But Hopefully, while you're doing so, you get your little spikes up. Uh, also, I should be said that the physical progress of Chestnut really does allow it to build a drum if that's an aspect to get it with Salic Berry, and it also hits super effectively really well. So, the Salt Vest variant of Chestnut is not necessarily that shabby. Unfortunately, it is forced to be physical, which is why it's more predictable in Tangrove in those aspects, but at the same time, Drain Punch, Wood Hammer, Sin Headbutt, and you know, filler moves in Earthquake really just fills the void of most matchup anyway. And if you want to actually leave yourself for a possible flying type, you can go for a Rock Slide or, of course, Thunder Punch. But overall, Chestnut is a very, very good defensive Pokemon. It's just, it's fairly underrated because Tangrowth is resolving the most issues because 
Of course, you leave yourself a fighting type you can aspect to something more defensively active. That said, grass fighting is a good defensive type. You can use it whether or not you want to actually leave yourself off your fighting type to a grass type or something else. But overall, there really aren't that many things setting these two Pokemon apart. So what this matchup really comes down to, and I'm being completely honest here when it comes to doing both of these Pokemon as fair judgments I can do, it becomes depending on what the team you go in to bring. And I don't mean that by that certain Pokemon are vastly superior to the other one. I do believe both fill the same kind of role. However, I definitely believe that the stamina game can go for a more board game or flexible kind of matchup. Tangrove is a go-to Pokemon. However, Chestnut do represent what I just said before. A stronger defensive type in with the aspect of punish switching with spikes. And that's an invaluable aspect to have in a matchup. However, as I said before, I do believe, unfortunately, due to the cover pace aspect, that you really want to have a different kind of fighting type. You do want to have something that breaks apart the team, and I do believe that's the very sole reason, while they're both doing pretty much the same thing, that Chestnut is deemed to be the worst between these two. It basically is an aspect of you really want a fighting type to be able to punish your Pokemon, pose your Pokemon that are in the higher ladder. That's why Tangrove is so successful, because it fills the same role while not being necessarily all that worse it really is as good if not better defensively than chestnut and i do believe it's much much easier to team set up with tangrove chestnut you're going to be forced out a lot of time tangrove due to assault vest variant and of course regenerator can safely stay in against a lot of matchup and still get the regenerating going on and not being knocked out uh, I do believe that strategy with Tangro really is what pushed it over the edge here and even though I would say the Chestnut is on par and in some aspect better than Tangro, I believe Tangro fills more hole for a team for a different environment. The league aspect I think that's even becomes clearer because Chestnut is definitely easier to prep for while Tangro, while being able to prep for it, it is very hard to deal with head on and that's why Tangro win this matchup. So with of course that said, what do you guys think? Um, I really hope I got my chance of talking about why Chestnut really is an unrated Pokemon. I definitely believe Tangrove is the tougher Pokemon to be compared to, but really they both are defining themselves as being defensively really strong grass types. Just very clear that Tangrove sold as that issue better mainly because of its sole grass typing, but really just due to the regenerator, which really just puts another layer on Pokemon itself in different strategy. I do believe Chestnut, unfortunately, are born to be always defensive or physical, and those things are, while good, because it does do them well, it just makes Tangrove more unpredictable, and that's always going to be a stronger aspect when it comes to more matchup we're forced to be dealing with. Uh, so, of course, with that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and join us next week for a matchup I don't believe I can do more justice than the title itself. So enjoy it.